Anyway, chat, long story short, we're still covering the mountain of Targon. We've covered Aurelian Soul, we've covered what's happening in the Targon itself. We know that Celestials are children of Aurelian Soul, who is being enslaved by Targonians. And now let's cover the Targonians. So one of them is Zoe, our favorite as a Jack's I know I love her, you know that we love her, you know, Jack's Mane's a symbol. So let's cover a bit of Zoe and let's start with Zoe's aspect of Twilight Champion Teaser, which we received uh, five years ago, by the way. You have to take into consideration the fact that this ability, Zoe's Sleepy Bubble Trouble, bro, was the first ability we saw in game that is going across the map like that. That was something new. <laughs> Half a map. Not okay. So not okay. <laughs> Good old days when my boy Aesol had his balls. Riot, bring back his balls, you know? Also, seeing her steal at least 20 abilities and flashing her 20 times was something new as well, by the way, so yeah. Now everyone is used to it, but back then, bro, that was mind-breaking. And that was the teaser we received. Honestly, still doesn't beat Velka's teaser. Velka's teaser was slightly better. Lot accurate, Ramos. Still sleeping, by the way. So what's the story of Zoe, you might be asking? Well, let's figure out. Let's see what Necrid has to say about it. Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's been a while since we got a proper Targonian story. Mm -hmm. All we got were references and hints as to what might happen in the future. Well, with Zoe, things finally started moving forward. So, how old is this video, by the way? Five years, only five years. Oh, so, without further ado, let's have a look at the aspect of Twilight. Mm -hmm. As the embodiment of mischief, imagination, and change, Zoe acts as the cosmic messenger of Targon, heralding major events that reshape worlds. Her mere presence warps the arcane mathematics governing realities, sometimes causing cataclysms without conscious effort or malice. This perhaps explains the breezy nonchalance with which Zoe approaches her duties, giving her plenty of time to focus on playing games, tricking mortals, or otherwise amusing herself. It just doesn't give up. Cataclysm and there doesn't matter. You removed Damasia, doesn't matter. You just bombed Noxus. Doesn't matter, no, just another day in the office. An encounter with Zoe can be joyous and life-affirming. Uh, true that, as a Jack Spain, I can confirm. It is always more than it appears and often extremely dangerous. As befits her Targonian aspect's nature, Zoe did not ascend to power in one of the traditional ways. She didn't win a great victory against overwhelming odds or sacrifice herself for a noble ideal or overcome the existential trial of climbing Mount Targon. Instead, oh, so you want to tell me there are three ways of becoming an aspect, eh? Sacrifice, fight against uh, great odds, and climb the mountain. These three. Okay, I thought it was only climbing the mountain. But uh, then again, it doesn't fit the Zoe's narrative because she didn't climb the mountain, she became the aspect. Zoe was a normal girl, seemingly chosen at random. Her Lunari teachers reported Zoe to be an imaginative child, but willful, lazy, easily distracted, and mischievous. So basically she has ADHD. That's why she was so relatable when she was released. That's why a lot of players decided to play her. One day, as she skipped away from the studies of the holy magics to pursue something less boring, she was noticed by the Targonian aspect of Twilight. It observed as the little girl playfully mocked the angry cries of the Lunari priest chasing her. The <laughs> For the recent events, I'm just trying not to think about it as a bad thing, you know? Stalking a little girl who is being chased by a priest who decided to run away from her school. 
Then, after an hour-long pursuit, she found herself cornered by her angry teachers. Before they could grab Zoe, the Aspect summoned six objects in front of the girl. Okay. A bag of golden coins, a sword, a completed study book, a devotion rug, a silk rope, and a toy ball. I need this aspect of Twilight to summon a rope for my League of Legends teammates. I'm just saying. Five of these objects could have let her flee or defuse the situation. Zoe chose the sixth option. Unconcerned with escape, she instead grabbed the toy ball, kicked it toward the wall of an adjoining house, and sang gleefully as it ricocheted among the humorless priests. Delighted by Zoe's carefree exuberance, the aspect opened a shimmering portal to the apex of Mount Targon, offering the girl a chance to see the universe. She dove backward into the portal, instantly merging with the aspect, then stuck her tongue out at the dumbfolded teachers as she disappeared. Following this unusual transcendence, Zoe journeyed to dimensions at the very edge of Targon's control, playing with realities beyond human comprehension. Returning home after millennia, Zoe has aged barely a year. Doru See chat, pay attention. After millennia, technically she's old enough, I'm just saying. Kuntera has changed a little from her perspective, she arrived full of teenage curiosity for humans and her fellow aspects. Perhaps her most curious relationship is with Aurelian Soul. The cosmic dragon's arrogance, lies and world wariness annoy Zoe. In return, she teases the giant creature relentlessly. But when needed, she also protects her space doggy and his stars from Pantheon's wrath. Ah, so she's defending it. Good guy Zoe, eh? Whether this is simply a whim, possessiveness, or her function as a disruptor, no one can be certain. Because with Zoe, no one can be sure what she's really aiming for, other than her own amusement. The moment she thought of the cake store, Zoe dove into the air, surrendering herself to gravity. While falling, she reached out with her consciousness to form a gateway. Instantly, a portal opened beneath her and connected to the other place. She fell into the gate. Her mask collided and imploded as she traveled. It kinda tickles. Unfortunately, Zoe did not appear at her intended destination. Instead, she emerged from a second portal only a dozen strides away propelled through the air by the momentum of her previous fall. So instead of appearing in the donut shop, in the cake shop, she appeared in the forest. Hold up. Then after a brief moment of equilibrium, she was pulled back into the second portal. Again, time and space twisted around her, all swooshy-like as she would describe it, before flopping her back at the starting point. Both portals then folded into space and disappeared. A powerful magic was distorting Zoe's ability to travel. It probably related to whatever change she was supposed to herald. And obviously, she hadn't succeeded yet. It was a problem, but not an unfamiliar one. She wasn't really sure what the message was, who it was for, or even what it meant. But in her experience, those details rarely mattered. The I mean, she has experience of millennia, just saying. So, you know, if details doesn't matter, details don't matter, you know? The holy mathematics wanted to advance and the messages generally fell into place shortly after she arrived. Zoe felt that was a pretty cool advantage of being an aspect. Of course, there was now the question of what to do while she waited. Zoe glanced around. Beside a nearby tree, she spotted a small fuzzy creature with a huge tail. It looked similar to a tiny yordle, though Zoe noticed how this creature's connection to the spirit world was comparatively minuscule. And to ensure how the first example is not a furry animal, is not a squirrel, is not a raccoon, it's a yordle. The first comparison is a yordle, like bro, you gotta love that. The small animal's life pattern flashed in Zoe's brain. It would live only a dozen rotations before returning its spirit. To her, the brevity of its life made it more adorable. Holy shit, bro. No way Zoe just saw through the creature and saw when the thing will die. That's kinda creepy power to have, no? Zoe jumped and ran toward it. So cute! The tiny animal scrambled up the tree away from her. Hey, come back! She pouted. Without slowing her pursuit, Zoe created a time bubble, turning it only half a planet's rotation before launching it at the tree. The How much? Hold on. Time bubble, turning it only half a planet's rotation before launching it at the tree. 
only half a planet's rotation. Okay then. The anomaly bounced before bursting against the tree's trunk. For a second, the cute animal's past merged with the present. The night sky overtook the area and twilight butterflies pools around it. The small creature fell into the tired restful sleep of the previous evening, as its past spiritual and mental state overwhelmed its current consciousness. Zoe ignored gravity for a moment. Floated. So basically Zoe's bubble is an amazing trip of acid. Where you are in your spirit realm, yeah? you are in the astral plane with the avatar and the previous avatars. I see how it is. And I thought it was just a sleepy bubble. No, it's an acid trip. Gotcha. Set up into the branches and came to a stop beside the tiny animal. Her hand hesitated above its downy fur. She knew the moment she touched the creature, her spell would break. Zoe is a friend. <laughs> she whispered. But when she caressed the tiny animal's head, it burst awake and dove away from her in panic. Ah. With a disappointed moan, Zoe floated a bit higher before flipping upside down. She considered visiting Aurelian Sol after she finished here. The dragon didn't like being petted either, but she thought he was easier to catch without harming. This notion vanished as, thanks to her new altitude, Zoe saw past the hills and spotted a village on the horizon. Well, back to the Aesol. Yeah, it's kind of easy to capture Aesol because he's already captured. He's a slave, just saying. He's enslaved by Targonians and he belongs to Mount Targon right now. So, you know. She willed a portal to the town into existence and dove into it. But again, Zoe was only able to create a gate to a few yards away. Mm -hmm. Worse, it collapsed upon itself as before and pulled her back to the starting point. The summer grass did seem inviting, so with no better option, she walked through the forest to the village. She arrived at the outskirts of the walled town as the sun began to set. Hearing laughter, she dismissed gravity for a second and floated up to one of the village's rooftops. In Casually dismisses gravity, I do enjoy that, brother. <laughs> one boy Newton spent entire life developing the theory of gravity, so it just well, dismisses it, doesn't matter, for another day in the office, you know? In the center courtyard, a half dozen mortals were playing. They were almost exactly Zoe's size, unlike the children or adults she had encountered more recently in her tour of the planet. One of the males chased a female around a circle. Both were laughing. The rules of the game were unclear. Zoe focused on the girl's beautiful red dress, wondering if the coloration represented something. Even if it wasn't part of the game, Zoe liked it. The girl seemed taller than the other females, and Zoe felt the girl might know things she needed to learn. The male was also interesting, but in a completely different way. She could tell his current incarnation would be short-lived, but Zoe suspected it would be a- Ouch! Short-lived to whom? And if we were talking about the human, who did, uh, about the boy who will live probably 80 years, to Zoe, yeah, who lives millennia, because she's thousands of years old. If you live thousands of years old, sure, 80 years is a bit short. Or does she see that the boy will actually die in two years right now? Bro, that's a creepy power to have, just saying. Amazing if he chased her. There was something wonderful about his chin and the shape of his lips. She swallowed nervously. Sam? It had, after all, been a very long time since Zoe was a mortal or had even visited this realm. She was strangely worried that the group wouldn't accept her and she would be left out of whatever they were playing. Two of the other boys, decidedly less interesting ones, began kicking a ball between themselves. This game Zoe remembered. Emboldened by this connection, Zoe swooped down from the rooftop to the middle of the group. Hi. She said while turning the base of her hair into a color that mimicked the tall female's dress. A spirit? The interesting boy sat with wide eyes. Then he screamed. Run! <laughs> Zoe felt she should point out that she was an aspect rather than a spirit. But she was uncertain if his cries was part of the other game's rules. Actually, I'm here with a message. But if you wanted to play, I have plenty of time. She said as she launched after them. Then she flew, as casually as she could, alongside the tall girl. The message, but the problem is you don't know about the message, right? The fact that she hasn't delivered the message isn't allowing her to use her powers fully, that's why she's using her ultimate only teleporting back and out, you know? Only in and out, 20 minute adventure. Also, why is she delivering a message to the children? The span of thousands of years, maybe you should have learned it to deliver a message to someone else than children. Your red outfit is so cool! Does the color mean something? 
Zoe asked, but her attempt at starting a conversation hardly mattered. As she spoke, the tall girl was pulled into a house by the interesting boy. He then slammed the heavy wooden door shut, blocking Zoe's path. Friendzone. Zoe glanced around, discovering the other mortals had similarly disappeared. But a commotion could be heard coming from a keep near the center of the town. After a moment, a dozen men in armor came running toward Zoe with spears. They reminded her of Pantheon's weapon. Local guardians. She summarized. Assuming she was a spirit, they screamed warnings, while the leader attempted a banishing spell. It was a very good spell, in Zoe's opinion, but not one she wanted. She wondered if, perhaps, spirits frequently plague the town. Then the men began throwing their weapons at Zoe. No, I'm just curious, what kind of city is this? She manifested an arcane meteor and sent it on a flight path around the keep. Then the Twilight Girl created a pair of portals to dodge the Guardian Spears before finally redirecting the shooting star at her attackers. The meteor's impact created an implosion, causing a chain reaction with the small particles it had gathered while flying, which resulted in a secondary explosion that thundered through the guards and their tower, annihilating the area into a fine dust. Now imagine we have that Q ability in-game. I'm thinking Aurelian Soul's ultimate, but slightly better. Combine Aurelian Soul's ultimate and Zoe's Q, you know? Zoe asked as the clouds of destruction whirled around her. She wondered if the tall girl or the interesting boy had run away. It seemed likely. Momentarily dispirited, Zoe decided to visit a larger mortal settlement next. It seemed like someone might be willing to play with her at that sort of location. Wait, don't tell me that she just nuked a f***ing town. <laughs> because they wouldn't play with her. <laughs> Casual Zoe. Zoe remembered where a city had been few thousand years ago. On instinct and despite her previous failures, she willed a portal to it. And she was pleasantly surprised when a gateway opened to her intended destination. How cool! She said, happy to be able to travel again. And eager to deliver her next message. As Zoe stepped out of reality, she wondered if the new crater would lead some mortals to find the world rune that was nearby. The tall girl or that interesting boy might even be the ones who discover it. It would probably be funny if they did, she decided. And that- World runes are basically nukes. So, wait, you want to tell me that Zoe decided to nuke a nuke? Cool. It was the story of Zoe. I was hoping it would expand the universe a bit more, but we still got some interesting information from it. For I mean, at the end, we managed to get her ability, so that's good. We didn't only get her uh, dub ability, the one that seals the flashes. That's about it. For example, she's acting like destroying towns and turning them into craters is normal. So maybe that's part of her messages. There's also the big question of where Zoe had it. When it comes to cities that existed long time ago, Ikathia comes to mind first. If the unknown force that disrupts her portals is the Void, it would only make sense that she would be able to open a portal only to Ikathia. This could be how the Void traps the aspect of Twilight. Also, Shurima is neighboring Targon, so Zoe remembering a Shuriman city makes sense too. Or there is the other option that the aspect of Twilight is controlling Zoe's movements, so the actual aspect is deciding where she can go and where she can't. But that's it for Zoe and that's it for this video. Honestly, if I was the aspect of Twilight, I also wouldn't trust her. Just saying. If you enjoyed it, feel free to rate this video and subscribe for more stories. Like, no way, like five years ago. I don't believe that five years ago we were still rating videos. I know it was maybe seven years ago, maybe eight years ago, but five, nah. Of course, massive thanks goes to the voices you heard here. This time we have the lovely Lily Pichu as Zoe and the impeccable Quinn Boys Bacon as the interesting boy. Links to their channels and the other things will be in the description. Yeah, that's where Zoe's voice was familiar, not to speak to. So thank you all so much for being here and for your support. You know, I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you come again. We surely will. So, yeah. We need to cover more shenanigans against the Targon. What remains? Leona, Pantheon, Diana, Tarek. Something and I'm pretty sure something else, maybe. Anyway, and that's the video.